welcome to the Old Time Radio Westerns. I'm your host, Andrew Rines, and let's get into this episode. This episode is going to be Hopalong Cassidy. Original air date is October 7th, 1950, and the title is Tinker's Dam. Let's get into it, and I hope you enjoy. The ring of the silver spurs heralds the most amazing man ever to ride the prairies of the early west, Hopalong Cassidy. This famous hero thrills his 60 million fans with action and dangerous adventure. In the role of Hopalong Cassidy is the popular star of the motion picture series, William Boyd. And now, another exciting story of the early West. Tinker's Dam. <laughs> two things that attracted the attention of Hopalong in California as they rode down the turnpike that led past the Circle X. One was the dilapidated condition of the sagging fence that wound in and out among the crumbling boulders and the trees. The other was the growing cloud of dust that twisted and turned toward them from the distance along the winding road. Hey, Hoppy, what do you reckon is making all that dust? A parcel of cow punchers, or maybe a farm wagon? Uh, judging from the speed of traveling, my guess would be a stagecoach. Oh, a stagecoach, eh? Well, where do you reckon they're bound? Oh, uh, the Circle X, most likely. You thought I hear that the Circle X went broke and moved out? After old man Lawson died, the place went down fast. But his son is still operating there. Judging by the condition of these here fence, he sure ain't doing too well. I think we'd better get off the road, California. That stagecoach will be coming around to bend any minute. I don't want to swallow any more of that dust that I can help. That sounds like trouble. Yeah, that stage driver is probably trying to knock over a jackrabbit. That's no rabbit. Come on. Yeah, that's a woman yelling. Sounds like she could use some help. Hey, look, it's the stagecoach, all right. Careful now. Yeah. Looks like the driver is hurt. I'm afraid it's worse than that. He's dead. <laughs> Hello in there. Are you hurt, miss? Look out, Hoppy. Oh, there, lady. Watch where you're pointing that gun. Stay back or I'll shoot. That gun's been talking. Oh, yeah, sure has. You can smell the powder in the barrel. I shot him. I shot him, I tell you. <laughs> Back to Hopalong Cassidy on our story, Tinker's Dam. Hoppy in California ran to the aid of a lady in distress only to have her turn a gun on them. The stage driver is dead and the lady fainted after screaming, I shot him. There, she's coming around now. I want to make sure there ain't no guns in reach when she comes to. Oh? She's been frightened by all this, California. She's been frightened? <laughs> the way she wielded that six-gun under my mustache didn't do me no good. Oh, I... oh, what's happened? You just fainted, miss. You'll be all right. Oh, the driver. Is he dead? You shot him. You ought to know. No, no! California, now, now, miss. I didn't shoot him. No, but just hit you. I but... shot the bandit. Hmm? A bandit? What, what bandit? It was horrible. All dressed in black. Black mask. Even his horse, all covered with a black cloth. Mm, sounds mighty peculiar. Oh. Lady, are you sure that you... We'll take your... the lady's word for it, California. <laughs> a horse wearing a black kimono. <laughs> Was there anything unusual about him? His voice, his hand, rings on his fingers, anything you could identify? Nothing. Oh, it was horrible. Just take it easy, miss. Uh, miss... Lawson, 
Jane Lawson. I'm Hopalong Cassidy, and this is California Carlson. Say, you wouldn't be Tom Lawson's daughter from the Circle X. That's right. Do, uh, do you always pack a six-gun around with you? When the stage driver saw the bandit, he handed down his revolver to me. Then he fired at the bandit with his shotgun. But he missed it. And then the bandit shot him. Oh. Howdy, Paul. Now, uh, what on earth is that thing? A junk wagon? Any pots to mend, the pans to pink. Oh, Tom will fix him. Quick as a wink. If the kettle's leak, I don't get nervous. I'm Tom the Picker. At your service. Hey, the golden poet. We've got troubles, all right, but it'll take more than a tinker to fix them. Oh, oh, that's Gus Lieber. The stage driver? Yep, he's cast in, sure enough. Oh, there's been three killings just like this. That bandit's never known to miss. And when the stage is carrying gold, the driver ends up stiff and cold. You're quite a poet. Oh, it comes natural to me. How did you know there was anything valuable on the stage? Because that's the way the other holdups were. The fellow that owns the stage line, Mac Garrett, says he's going to get his other doing it dead or alive. He put up a $5,000 reward, he did. For $5,000, I could be just curious enough to find out who done it. Yeah, never catch him. Live or dead. He'll die with his boots off. Home in bed. Oh, poor Gus. This will be bad news for his wife. He's got three kids in that hotel. Expect me now. There ain't much that you don't know about these here parts, is there? <laughs> I haven't been tinker, tinsmith, and general repairman around this territory ten years for nothing. I know them all. They all know me. Man of honor and honesty. Yeah, you're too darn modest for my taste. And I don't care none for these holdups and killings, neither. I don't fancy bloodshed, none whatsoever. Yeah, that's true enough, friend. Oh, that's too bad. The stage driver's life... Isn't worth a tinker's damn round here. Just watch your language, old fella. There's a lady present. Don't you misunderstand? Tinker's damn isn't swearing. Just an expression. Means something not worth very much. It's spelled D-A-M. It isn't cutting it off. But at any rate, Miss, I hope you've taken no offense. You don't remember me, Tom. You haven't seen me since I was a little girl. A little girl? Oh, it's Jeannie Lawson. I haven't laid eyes on you since you went away to school. Oh, golly, child. Living in the big old city, she has made you mighty pretty. <laughs> Poetry. Yeah, this here reunion is mighty touching. But I reckon I better head for town and get the sheriff. All right, California. We'll see you at the ranch. You can tell the sheriff I took a shot at the bandit, and I may have wounded him. He was so close, I don't see how I could miss. You're lucky he didn't return your fire. He wouldn't have missed. Now that I think of it, I can't understand why he didn't shoot me. He turned around as I shot at him, and for a moment I thought he was going to shoot me. And then he rode off. Ah, that's mighty peculiar. Now, some of her, I'll pass it along to the sheriff and let him figure it out. Well, so long. So long. Well, miss, we can drive you to the ranch. You can ride inside the coach. I'd rather not, if you don't mind. I understand. Well, then, if you'd like to share my saddle, I'm, I'm sure my horse won't mind. All right. I've ridden two on a horse with my brother many a time. Up you go, then. Oh. Ah, there you are. Come along to the ranch, Tom. You're always welcome. Hey, gladly, gladly, yes. I, I'd ride the stagecoach for old Gus. Oh, rest his soul. I tied my horse and caught him behind, but run along, you two. I'll be there presently. Adios. Oh, a bandit shot. Or maybe not. But a bandit with a bullet wound could be identified right soon. This is the Circle X. This is all that's left of it, I'm sorry to say. But come inside, Mr. Cassidy. Mind the front step. Some of the boards are loose. Mm. I hope my brother's home. I haven't seen him for ages. You see, he's been staying here. Hello, Andy. What? Andy, you're hurt. It's nothing. And why the rifle? Have you been hunting? Don't ask so many questions. And get out of the doorway. You're making too good a target. Target? What is this, a feud? Any of your business, stranger? Oh, Andy, please man has been very kind to me. He has, has he? So kindly control your temper. This is Mr. Cassidy, my brother Andy. Howdy. Sorry if I spoke out of turn, Mr. Cassidy. Some fool took a pot shot at me about a half hour ago and... You'd better let me take a look at that shoulder. Must say you've done a bad job of bandaging. Only had one hand to do it with. Ow! Be careful. Now hold still while I fix the bandage. Ow! I've been keeping a sharp lookout in case that fella comes around to finish me off. 
That's why I'm keeping this gun close by. Andy, you haven't been gambling again or fighting with the neighbors. No, no. I tell you, I don't know who shot me or why. Whoever it was fired from behind a clump of trees as I rode down past the south fence. I knew I was losing blood, so I took a shortcut over the hill. Just got home a few minutes ago, and... Well, what are you staring at? Can a man get shot without being a curiosity? Mr. Cassidy, I know what you're thinking, but it's not so. I didn't say a thing, miss. Say, what is all this? Oh, I don't know. Everything seems to be happening at once. Our stage was held up on the way home. The driver was killed. Now you're hurt, too. I don't see why everything has to happen to us. And now Mr. Cassidy thinks you're the bandit. Bandit? Miss, you're jumping at conclusions. I haven't formed any opinions so far. Well, I have. Well, Sheriff, what's ailing you? I just happened to overhear that last remark of your sister's, that's all. And here's Tom the Tinker. Well, quite a little social call this is. What's this got to do with you, Tom? Hey, never you mind, Andy Larson. The man's been killed and you've been shot. I reckon they'll hang you like it's not. That's enough poetry, Tom. I'll do the talking. Then go ahead and talk your fool head off. If nobody minds, I'll be paid to discover it. Pick up a few pots and pans that are long overdue. Well, good idea. Stick to your pots and pans to keep the nose out of my business. All right, young man. You shut your mouth off a plenty. Now, just put down that rifle and come along. Come along? Where? What is this? You're under arrest. What for? For murder and armed robbery. You're crazy. Aren't you being a little hasty, Sheriff? Huh? Don't reckon I've met up with you before, stranger. But how do you figure in this? Cassidy's the name. Hop along, Cassidy. I see. Well, then, you know all the answers. The stage is held up, the driver kills. So? Then we find the girl's brother with a wounded shoulder. And that's a very good reason why the bandit didn't shoot the girl. Because she's his own sister. That's a lie. It certainly is. And what's more, I think it's downright horrid of you all to suspect Andy. Why, he scrimped and saved every nickel a ranch earned to put me through school. I know, I know, Miss Janey. Believe me, if I could give him a break, I would. But murder's been done and the law is the law. The evidence is all against him. So I'm arresting you right now, Andy Lawson, for the murder of Gus Liebel and the mother three drivers. As well as for the stage robberies. I reckon this puts me in line for Matt Garrett's $5,000 reward. Now, ah, just a minute, Sheriff. Maybe there's another reason why the bandit didn't shoot this young lady. And what it might it be, since you're so all fired clever? The bandit was holding the heavy cash box with one hand and the reins of his horse with the other. I don't see how he could possibly shoot the young lady, even if he wanted to. Mm. Well, I don't see it that way. And I'm the law, not you. So go, come along, Andy. Oh, Andy. Well, of all the crazy... Do you have any remarks to make, make them to the judge? Now, get going. You haven't heard the last of this, Sheriff. Just keep walking straight ahead. As soon as I get your handcuffed to my buggy, I'm searching this house for that 10,000 simoleons in gold. Hoppy, I don't see no sense of getting up so early in the a.m. We ain't got no work to do. Where are we right? We've got work to do. Make no mistake about that. If you're still thinking of helping out that pretty little Lawson gal, you're a waste in your time. The sheriff found a thousand dollars of that stolen gold, didn't he? Mm-hmm. And right in their own house, didn't he? Yeah. You bet he did. And that's curtains for young Lawson. All right. So he found a thousand dollars of it. So there's nine thousand dollars missing. Suppose there is. You ain't gonna find it out here on the road. Not behind a bush, neither. Let's try this next one. Uh, ain't no sense to this. I'm a getting my britches all tore to smithereens by these dull darn bushes. What's so infernal special about this side of the boulder? It's just exactly the same as the front side, ain't it? But oh, concern these golden bushes. Look at that. Rip the pocket clean open. What's the difference? There's nothing in it. Oh, and I just bought these here bridges only. Take a look at this. What do you make of it? Hmm? Yeah, looks, looks like a slug from a six gun. Where'd you get it? Found it right here on the ground behind this boulder. This is not a slug from a cartridge. This one is flat at both ends. Well, flat or pointed, what difference does it make? It may make plenty of difference. Yeah, not to me. To young Andy Lawson. Hmm? How's that? And there's no time to waste, so let's head for town pronto. There's 
a powerful large mob milling around. What are you looking up to, Hoppy? An angry mob in front of a jail means just one thing, California. We've got to break this up quick. Yeah, yeah. Open suicide, Hoppy, but I'm right behind you. That's Matt Garrett leading the mob. Yes, he's got a right, Hoppy. It's his stages that have been held up. No man's got a right to stir a crowd to murder. He looks like it's gone too far. I'm riding through the center of them. Try to cover me. Men, give Andy Lawson to the sheriff. Stop this lawless. We're taking care of Lawson ourselves. Then there'll be peace around here. Garrett, you have no right. You can't do this. We can't, huh? Hear that, men? Here, we'll get him. Break it down. Come on! Now we'll get him. Garrett, you'll have a lot to answer for. Stop before it's too late. He ain't here. Lawson broke jail. He's escaped. Oh, this is your trick, eh, Cassidy? You're the one who helped Lawson escape. No, I'm not, but I'm glad he did. Hear that, man? He's glad Lawson got away. Come on, let's get him. Cassidy done it. He helped Lawson escape. Hey, look out, Hoppy. They're getting nasty. I can handle this, California. Put your gun away. Cassidy's getting away, too. What are we waiting for? Uh, Hoppy, look out. Oh, we got it. We saw Cassidy now. Hoppy. Hoppy. <laughs> Before we continue, here is a word from your announcer. Back to Hop Along Cassidy and our story, Tinker's Dam. Hoppy was trying to break up the mob bent on Lynch and Andy Lawson. Lawson escaped, however, and the mob turned its fury on Hoppy. A hasty bullet creased his arm, but Hoppy, after being fixed up by a doctor, still insists on riding with the mob, even though he and California ride as their prisoners. Now, look here, Garrett. You're taking too much authority into your hands. You're darn right. Garrett, you've got no call to take our guns away. And Hoppy, you're riding here wounded with his arm in a sling. Uh, you boys just keep your mouth shut and start playing. If we don't find Lawson at the ranch, the mob will bring you two up instead. I tell you, we have nothing to do with it. Don't give me that, Cassidy. You stuck your nose into this and you got caught. If you and your pal weren't helping Lawson to break jail, what were you doing monkeying around the jail? I told you we have new evidence. Evidence, my eye. Stages are robbed, my drivers are killed, and we know it's responsible. I'm going to personally make sure that he's hung. I'm going to ride up to the front of this here posse. You two stay back here and just remember, my boys have ordered to kill you if you try anything. Finally, kind of fella, ain't he? Well, you can hardly blame him for these stages being robbed and his drivers killed. He sure all fired anxious to hang somebody. I thought maybe he might be trying to pin the blame on somebody else. You mean you think Gad robbed his own stages? Yeah, why not? It's been done before, Hoppy. He'd be just the critter who could get away with it. And nobody'd suspect him. What I don't like is the way the sheriff suddenly disappears. Just the lynch mob starts gathering. They said he went out to the ranch to question the girl, but I wonder. Come on, nation, Hoppy. You don't think the sheriff done it, do you? I'm not sure what to think, but I know one thing. We're going to have to look sharp and act fast when the time comes, or we'll be dancing at the end of a rope along with Andy Lawson. Hold it! Whoa, boy! There they are! Now look out for Trick! We've got to walk over our age. Get away this time! Well, well. 
well, well. Quite a little social gathering. Tom the Tinker, the Sheriff, Miss Lawson, and our old friend, Mr. Andy Lawson, late of the Sandy Flats Jail. <laughs> now, fancy meeting you all here. <laughs> yeah. You fancy that. You tell them, Bob. Now, don't start taking over, Garrett. I'm still the Sheriff here. Yeah. Maybe we're not interested in that, Sheriff. Maybe we got, uh... Shall we say more urgent business? You said it. Why's the rope? Well, why waste time talking? Now, just a minute, just a minute. Andy tells me he heard a lynch mob was forming, so he broke loose and made his way home to the ranch. Turn him over to us! He gave himself to me personally. And I am personally a similar responsibility for his safety. Then you can personally watch him hang. Here, if you're taking a sudden and peculiar interest in this young coyote, maybe you're in cahoots with him. You watch your tongue, Garrett, or mob or no mob, Be I'll... careful, Sheriff. My boys won't shoot unless they have to. But we're taken, Lawson, whether you like it or not. And now at last the end has come for this bad and guilty man. And as for you, Tinker, keep out of this or you'll get hurt. Yeah, 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 I won't interfere. But Lawson's crime will cost him dear. Some friend you turned out to be. I'm ashamed of you, Tom. But our friendship's gone. Why try to show it? <laughs> the boy's guilty. And we all know. He's not guilty. Get her out of the way. I don't want the women getting hurt. No. Let me alone. Let me go. And get that fool tinker out of here. He's crazier than a coot. Now, come on, boys. Let's get it over with. Okay, Garrett. Bring the rope. Just drag him over here. Just a minute, boys. There's something I want you to see. Go darn right. Make way, ornery goat. Cassidy, I warned you to stay out of this. One try, Garrett. I said move. Oh, oh. Are you scrawny little... Grab him. Watch the other one. Oh, shoot him. He's killing. Look out. Ah, the boy, California. Now watch this, boy. Hey, you, you fool. You've knocked over my cart. You will pay for this. Cassidy, you're asking for it. All right, boys, work them over. Wait a minute, fellas. You see what I see? Look what Hoppy's pulling out of the Tinker's cart. A black mess and a big black claw. What do you know about that? What's a Tinker doing with them things? Oh, darn it, Hoppy. How'd you know them things was in there? Just made a good guess, that's all. Now, listen here, Cassidy. If this is another of your tricks, we'll... Uh Uh-huh. Now, what's this? What's it look like? Well, I'll be jiggered. A gunny sack full of gold coins. Look at the gold. Must be a thousand dollars. Twenty thousand more, like. Must be charging mighty fancy prices for his repairs. How about it, Tom? This is mighty expensive stuff to mend pots with, wouldn't you say? Now, let me get a word in here, Edgewise. I'm the sheriff, and I'm the law here. What you got to say for yourself, Tom? I got, I got plenty to say, Sheriff. Yeah, this here young lady I thought was my friend... It seems to have framed me. That's not so. You know me better than that, Sheriff. But it was only one way to save her brother. So she dug up the stuff he burnt and, and planted it in my cart. And to think I trusted her all these years. Well, Andy, we ain't heard a peep out of you. I'm the liar. I never robbed the stage. I never met at anybody. I certainly never saw any of that stuff before. Well, sir, you didn't see any of it. How about that thousand dollars in gold the sheriff found at your house? Yes, he found it the same day you arrived to fix the pots and pans. You were quite a little fixer, you were. Now, hold on, hold on. Let's get to the bottom of this quiet and legal life. There's one way to prove who the guilty party is, Sheriff. Such as? Let's take this black cloth that was used to cover the bandit's horse. As you can see, it fits over the horse from nose to tail and has two large eye holes. Well, let's try it on your horse. <laughs> Go ahead. He won't like it. Hold his head, California. Yes, the sheriff's or the horse. The horse isn't cut out the clowning. Yeah. Okay, I got him. Yep. Easy there, boy. Easy there, now. He ain't gonna hurt you none. Oh, hey, take it off him. Take it off him. He's gonna drag me into the next county. Oh, that's better. <laughs> I told you he wouldn't like it. You were right. Well, what's all this? What's all this foolishness, sheriff? You. You know Andy Lawson's the guilty party. You know what's happened to them poems you was always rhyming? You forget how to rhyme all of a sudden? All right, Sheriff. Your horse didn't like the black cloth over him. Now, let's try Miss Lawson's horse. As I understand it, this is the only horse at the ranch. So your brother rides this one, too. Right? And that's right. Then go ahead, Hoppy. I got hold of the bridle. All right. Now, easy there. Better now. Okay, old girl, we'll take it off. Whoa, there. Whoa. Easy now. Easy. That's the girl. Whoa, Whoa. Whoa. Hey, hey, hey. This is proving absolutely nothing. This man is making a fool out of you. We all know Lawson is a murderer. Maybe we do and maybe we don't. Well, Cassidy, what's our next move? Ready, California? Well, unaccustomed as I am to mind reading, I think I got your brainwave, Hoppy. 
This here's the tinker's horse this time, eh? Take your dirty hands off my horse. You scrawny. Let me go or I'll kick you right in the stomach. All right, all right. Break it up now. Let him go. Keep your hands off me, Sheriff. He's got the right experimenting with my property. Sure, sure. I'll go ahead, Cassidy. And if you're going to prove anything, get at it, Trottle. All right, Sheriff. Hold the horse, California. I got her, Huppy. Steady now, lady. Steady. Easy does it. Here we go. Over the head, and there we are. Well, turn my hide. She never moved a muscle. Don't move anybody. Well, well, our little tinker has turned gunfighter. Up with your hands, everybody. And no tricks. Because both these six guns got a hair trigger. I'm taking my horse and making tracks out of here. And as for you, Cassidy, you meddling fool. <laughs> Back to Hop Along Cassidy. Well, California, take your last look at the circle X. Yeah, kind of hated to leave. But we'd sure be stuck permanent if we stayed any longer. <laughs> Can't get over that fellow Matt Garrett who wanted to run you for sheriff in the next election. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess he figured he owed me something after the way he'd win me. Yeah, doggone. But I should have gotten suspicious when you insisted on putting your arm in a sling. Well, fella has to have some place to put a six gun. Even left handed, Hoppy. You took care of that Tom the Tinker. But how'd you figure out that the Tinker was the one? Especially when Andy had the wounded shoulder. The Tinker ambushed Andy after you heard James say she shot at the bandit. Oh, sure, I see that now. But the real getaway was the little thing I picked up behind that boulder. It was a piece of pot metal used by Tinker to mend a hole in a pot or a pan. You just shove it in the hole, hammer it flat, and your pot is fixed. Huh? They call it a Tinker's dam. Because it dams up the leak. So that's what it is. I, I always wondered. Well, a plug like this one isn't worth much. And that's where they get the saying, not worth a tinker's dam. But this tinker's dam appears to be worth plenty, because it saved Andy Lawson's life. This means it's so long from Hopalong Cassidy once again. Hoppy in California are riding back to the Bar 20 now to tell all the other waddies about the exciting story you just heard. If you'd like more of these two-gun adventures of Hoppy's, don't forget you can see him in the fine Hopalong Cassidy pictures at your local theater. Meanwhile, we're hoping you'll tune in next time Hopalong rides the airwaves to bring you more action out of the Old West. Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd, is transcribed and produced in the West by Walter White, Jr., Tinker's Dam was written by Bill Holmes. All stories are based upon the characters created by Clarence E. Mulford. This is a Commodore production.
This has been a presentation of otrwesterns.com, and we hope you enjoyed. Please take some time to like and rate our shows in your favorite podcast application. Follow us on Facebook by going to otrwesterns.com slash Facebook. Join in the conversation by going to otrwesterns.com slash Discord. And don't forget to send us an email, podcast at otrwesterns.com. This episode is copyright under the attribution, not commercial, share like copyright. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash copyright. Have a great day, and again, thanks for listening.